Hello everybody, this is Sunday School Made Simple, and I'm your hostess for this month, Lakita Wright. Well, you see this backpack here? Well, I have a story about it for you. One of my friends was doing a semester abroad studying in the islands, and he bought this backpack and used it to carry around, of course, books, laptop, and food. And as he was walking to class one day, it started to rain. Now, when he bought this backpack, he thought it was waterproof, and he continued on thinking it was not a big deal walking in the rain. And when he got to class, his notebook was wet. His food was wet. Everything inside the bag was not only wet, it was soggy. So, what happened? Well, my friend, when he gets back to his room, he was mad as all get out, thinking he had been lied to. They did a bait and switch on him. It was false advertising. How could this waterproof bag have this problem of being wet inside? So he looked for the, of course, instructions and found them in a zipper on the bottom of the bag. And the instructions said to pull out the waterproof covering and put it on the bag before getting it wet. Yes, the backpack had its own raincoat. And if the brother had just read the instructions, he wouldn't have had this problem. Welcome to Sunday School Made Simple. So glad you're with us as we explore the Word of God using the precepts for living commentary based on the Uniform Lesson series. Let's get right into today's lesson. Each week, we teach you how to make Sunday School Simple with a three-point format. The text, teaching tips, and takeaway tools. So let's begin with our lesson aim. One, we will recall Noah's faithful obedience to God in building the ark, repent for the times we fail to follow God's instructions, and resolve to do what God commands regardless of the challenges. Now Genesis, Genesis 6 verse 9 through 13 details who Noah is and how he was righteous in the midst of the corrupt world. Now you may have the King James Version and in precepts we give you two choices to read from the King James or the New Living Translation. I'm going to be reading from the NLT. Genesis 6, 9, it begins, it says, This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, the only blameless person living on earth at the time, and he walked in close fellowship with God. Noah was the father of three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now God saw that the earth had become corrupt and was filled with violence. And God observed all this corruption in the world for everyone on earth, was corrupt. So God said to Noah, I have decided to destroy all living creatures, for they have filled the earth with violence. Yes, I will wipe them all out along with the earth. Now there are three key points we see in this part of the scripture. Number one, Noah is a righteous man. He is morally upright, one of the very few people who is said to walk with God in Scripture in the entire Bible. Um, another one you might remember is his great-grandfather, Enoch. The Bible says he walked with God and he was not. Basically, God took him. He didn't die. There was no body to bury. God says the world was corrupt, number two, okay, which in Hebrew means destroy. So basically, the world was so filled with corruption or sin and violence Humans were destroying themselves and the earth. Now, everyone was corrupt except for Noah and his family. So that's the second point that we need to understand. The third is God tells Noah he is going to destroy the earth before the earth destroys itself or basically humans destroy it. Now, this is important for us to understand because all of us tend to wonder, you know, why did God destroy the earth? But you have to understand that the earth was on a crash course, or humanity was on a crash course of destruction due to the sin of man. So before man destroys himself and the entire planet, God decides, look, I'm going to save man. And I'm going to do it by, yes, destroying the earth, but I'm going to save man and I'm going to save creation as well. Now, the next set of verses in Genesis 6, verses 14 through 16, talk about God's solution to save creation through Noah. Verse 14, it goes along, it says, Build a large boat from cypress wood and waterproof it with tar inside and out. Then construct decks and stalls throughout its interior. 
make the boat 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. Leave an 18 inch opening below the roof all the way around the boat. Put the door on the side and build three decks inside the boat, lower, middle, and upper. Now that's some very specific instructions, but there are two key points that we can get from 14 through 16 that we need to pay attention to. Number one, God's solution for saving creation was building an ark, okay? Now an ark in this case, Okay, when the use of the word ark is used in the Bible in this case, it means a giant box shaped boat. And the word ark is only used twice in the entire Bible, Bible here and in describing infant or baby Moses's basket, which was also an ark. It was a box shaped basket. And this is not to be confused with the Ark of the Covenant. Okay, that word ark is used in English the same way, but it is a different word in Hebrew. And the second is that Noah had detailed instructions from God to make the ark or box suitable for its mission. So the final section of scripture for today is Genesis chapter six, verses 17 through 22, where God reveals his plan for the flood and the purpose for the ark. 17, it says, look, I'm about to cover the earth with a flood that will destroy every living thing that breathes. Everything on earth will die, but I will confirm my covenant with you. So enter the boat, you and your wife and your sons and their wives. Bring a pair of every kind of animal, a male and a female into the boat with you to keep them alive during the flood. Pairs of every kind of bird, every kind of animal, every kind of small animal that scurries along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. And be sure to take on board enough food for you, your family, and for all the animals. So Noah did everything exactly as God had commanded him, the Bible says. Now there are three points um, that we can take away from these verses. Number one, the flood endured in Genesis was a one of a kind event. Okay, so if people will talk about, oh, we had a flood in our neighborhood. Uh, did you hear about the floods in California? Oh my gosh, there was a flood in some you know, developing uh, nation. Those are floods and they are tragic and human life is lost, but this one was a one, um, a one time event. Now, it was more devastating than any other flood in scripture. The Greek translation for the word flood was cataclysmos, or where we get the word cataclysmic. And number two, God was still in control of creation. He was able to bring the animals to Noah. Noah didn't have to go track them, hunt them down, put them in nets and baskets and cages and bring them back. God actually brought the animals to Noah and to feed them with the plants that available that were available that God provided. Now Noah, the third point, was totally obedient to God's instructions. God makes an unconditional covenant with Noah. One that doesn't depend on Noah's obedience, anything that Noah or his descendants do. It is unconditional, this type of covenant. There's several types of covenant. This one is an uncon unconditional covenant that God's going to allow him and his family to survive as well as a pair of every animal so they could reproduce and repopulate the earth after the flood. God demonstrates his power over all creation again as he says the animals would come to Noah in verse 20. God would cause the animals to come. Noah didn't have to round them up as God commands, as I said before. Now, verse 22 states plainly that Noah does all that God commands him, even to the smallest detail. He didn't add, he didn't subtract, he didn't embellish, but he was to the T, he was specific. He builds the ark and cares for God's creation, as was God's original intention. Now that we've established what we should know about the word, let's talk about what we should feel about the word. We should feel, coming a little closer, Convicted, yeah, for the times we disobeyed, half obeyed or delayed obeyed because delayed obedience is disobedience. God's instructions are very important for us to obey. Now, um, 
This passage of scripture speaks about the problem of sin in the world, causing people to turn away from God first and then turn on one another violently. The humans hadn't stopped caring about obeying God. They had stopped caring about obeying God and focused instead on temporary situations which resulted in violence. Sinful humans are not only in danger themselves, but sinful humans also endanger the earth itself, which they inhabit, which they are dependent on for life. Ultimately, we're dependent on God for life, but God gives us food and air and clean water to drink. And Noah was there to still seek God in the midst of all of this chaos and obey him. And as a result, was used by God to save creation and his family. If Noah did not have a heart to follow through and obey God, the results could have been even more catastrophic or cataclysmic. Now, since the goal of teaching is to understand that we should know, feel, and do, we've come to a point where we know what we should know, we know how we should feel, and the next step is, what should we do? And what we should do is simple. Do what God tells us to do. I mean, it doesn't get any more simple than that, you know? It's not 10 suggestions, it's 10 commandments. It's not nine, it's not 11, and there ain't no book of hesitations. I mean, it doesn't get any more simple than that. The Bible is their basic instructions before leaving earth. Okay, the Bible can be an acronym for that. And God loves us and always has our, our way of survival and thriving available when we seek him and it's in his word. We do not have to fight over temporary things other people have when we have God who can care for us. James 2 and Matthew 6 both testify of God's provision for us when we seek him first instead of worrying, fighting, or oppressing others to get what we want or what we need. Now let's discuss how to effectively teach this lesson. Before you begin, pray for your students, that they would, one, have open hearts and minds to receive God's word. Pray for, two, creative teaching methods that will enable them to understand. And thirdly, pray that learners will be able to apply what they have learned because the word is nothing if we do not incarnate it and let it live through us in our lives. The first thing we need to do is open up with an activity or a hook for our students to really introduce the point of this lesson. Now what we have is something called the numbers game. Uh, the numbers game was in our vacation Bible school for the summer of 2018. And it's called the numbers game because everyone uh, will have a downloadable um, at the end of this session. You'll be able to go to the website and download a copy of the numbers game. It illustrates Noah's obedience to God by following God's instructions. The numbers on this sheet of paper are numbered 1 through 80, which is the average lifespan in America today. Every student has a downloadable printout, pen or pencil, and give them one minute timed to connect as many numbers as possible in numerical order. Now what you'll find is that people won't get very far. They'll probably get to maybe a dozen, 15 uh, numbers. Uh, so the second step in this activity is to give them another copy of the same, um, of the same sheet. But this time, you're gonna give them instructions. Have them fold the paper twice evenly, top to bottom and left to right into four squares so, it, so that it is creased, like a plus sign with the exact crosshairs in the middle. They'll have one minute, just like the last time, However, they, when they start from number one, what you will tell them in further instructions is that each number will always be in the next box going counterclockwise. You will find very quickly in this game that you will always go farther and faster when you follow directions and pay attention to the boundaries. This activity can easily apply to our own lives. In life, you can always go farther and you'll always go faster when you pay attention to the boundaries that the Lord has provided for us and you obey his instructions. Now, this numbers game is your hook. Now, let's look at the book. We need to present 
the scriptures. Invite volunteers to read the scriptures out loud. And if there's time, read the scripture in multiple versions and try to have more than one person read if possible. After reading the scriptures, you wanna ask the class, is there a time that you came to a realization that you missed God by not doing what he told you to do when he told you to do it? When you said no and you should have said yes and when you should have said no, but you said yes. Mm -hmm. This covers a whole spectrum of things, jobs, relationships, financial opportunities. And you look back and you say, oh, man, I missed it. All of us have had those moments, all of us. And we conclude this discussion by underscoring that we all fall short of God's will sometimes, but grace allows us to get back up and continue with God. This class discussion is not just for them to internalize it individually, but it actually is a bonding moment for a class for people to realize that everyone shares these experiences. Lastly, let's look to explore the meaning. If you have your addition of precepts, invite students to read both parts of the in-depth section. At the end of each section, read the questions and follow students, and allow students, excuse me, to participate in dialogue. There are also excellent questions in search the scriptures and discuss the meaning. For example, if you could give um, advice to everyone around you, like Noah had the opportunity and they were listening for a few moments, what would you say? The answers from your class should generate an interesting conversation. The final teaching tip um, is our took or next steps for application. There's a great perspective in the section, Liberating Lesson, that shows us how sometimes we think we are under judgment, but really God is saving us from an even worse situation. Conclude the lesson with the application for activation. This is important. Learning has no meaning if we don't apply it to our lives. You can invite your class or encourage them to go with other classmates to engage with an authority figure, whether it be an elected official, business owner, or anyone else appropriate to discuss something that they are undertaking that they may not be supported because people don't fully understand what they're doing. Have them spend time talking to them to see whether their opinion on the issue changes. Now, let's take our teaching to the next level with our takeaway tools. SundaySchoolMadeSimple.com offers a variety of resources. Every week we have something different available, so remember to check back every week. You'll find, you'll find downloadable multimedia resources and print resources designed to enhance learning experiences like videos for your class, slide decks that allow scripture, quotes, commentary, pictures, or other important information to be shared. Also, lesson outlines, which I encourage you to download before our weekly lessons so you can follow along, add your own personal notes, um, things that you would like to perhaps enhance and use for class. Our featured books for this month are Reunion Revival and Family First, written by Michael Jordan's mother, which will take you deeper into understanding the importance of family and how important family is to God. And lastly, TSKs, or Teaching Success Kits, which have activities, quizzes, and crafts for various ages, as well as music for small children to learn and enjoy. You can order this week's resources and TSKs for the entire quarter by clicking the link below. So, let's talk and get to our mailbag. All right, everybody, let's talk. It's time for mailbag. And this is my good friend, King James. I mean, James King, that really is his name. He is a youth pastor, um, he's into production, and he's an overall Renaissance fan. And he's gonna help us today with an interesting question that we've got. Okay. Okay, let me read this question that we got in our mailbag. It is, why should we teach the story of creation and why is it so important? Well, from my experience, there are about 
five or so, five stories I can think of right off the top of my head from the New Testament or Old Testament mm-hmm. that every Christian ought to know and every child should be taught mm-hmm. from the time that they are able to understand bedtime stories. So these are uh, OG stories, they're OT stories. Th- there you go, they're the OT stories. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> and so the first story, of course, is creation. Um, that you would begin. Mm-hmm. This is bedtime stuff. In fact, growing up, my first and earliest remembrances of understanding the Bible were actually brought to me by my mother and my grandmother at my bedside. So I learned these stories. First, the creation story, that in the beginning was God, like we said in episode mm-hmm. one, mm-hmm. that God is the creator of everything. It also spurned a lot of bedtime conversation about who God is, mm-hmm. who's God's mommy and daddy. Um, Where did God come from? Where does God live? Can God see me now? But it allowed me to really gain the very beginnings of my formation of thinking about and asking questions about God. Secondly, um, an important story when we get to creation is the Adam and Eve story of understanding that God created everyone and God created me. Mm -hmm. It helped me to understand for myself as a child growing up, knowing that God created me from the sense of of the way my nose is shaped, the Mm -hmm. way my hair is curled, Mm -hmm. how tall I am, how much I'm going to grow, all of those things, God had an input and a part in Mm -hmm. it. That was extremely helpful for understanding now God is concerned about and connected to me. The third big story that I really loved Mm -hmm. um, was the Adam and Eve story. I already said that, Adam and Eve story. Third story then is Cain and Abel. Right. Understanding how it's important for us, and because there were four of us in the house, of how siblings need to get along with one another, (laughs) but also how we want to make pleasing offerings to God because God wants the work of our hands Mm -hmm. to be something that pleases Him with our whole lives. Now, another big story that's important again is the Noah story. Mm -hmm. And that, that's one of the things that just ties into so many cool things growing up as a child. First of all, the rainbow. And um, we grew up in places um, around the world where we saw rainbows all the time. And so my first remembrance of a rainbow when I saw it was not that this was a scientific phenomenon that mm-hmm. occurred because lights were reflecting out of the raindrops in the air, but for me to recognize that this is God's promise that he would never destroy the earth again by water. And so that allowed me now to really re- reshape the way the world looked Mm -hmm. from a God perspective as a child. Mm -hmm. And so that's really why it's important um, for, first of all, children to know these stories, but also for us as Christians, we got to know these stories. Yeah. And I think it's really interesting, too, because um, in the book, Eternity in Their Hearts, it was Ah. really talking about how anthropologists and also geologists, even in the geological record, there is evidence around the world of at some point in time, the world was covered in water. Yes. And every human group, people group, some groups that have never even been in contact with each other, let alone the West or Christianity, um, account somewhere in their narrative that everything was destroyed by water. So I think it's really important for us to understand that God's word is true. That's right. And eternity is written on man's heart. That's right. Yeah. So anyway, thank you. I, thank I you. really thank I, you for coming on the show. You so can come back next week. Oh yeah. I'll and the week back. after. I'll come back. And the week after that. You're pushing it now. He's gonna be here all. Yeah. I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> all right. So thank you, and we will see you next week. Thanks for joining us this week with Sunday School Made Simple. Look forward to seeing you next week. But before we do, like us. Hit that subscribe button down below. And also, if you want to, you can hit that bell. So next time we have a video, you'll be notified. Also, at SundaySchoolMadeSimple at gmail.com, you can send your comments and your questions to our mailbox. And also, don't forget your free downloads at SundaySchoolMadeSimple.com.